friends, I want to welcome you to this celebration of life for J.J. Asher, our beloved friend, family, wife of an incredible woman, and uh, so much more. And so we, just to let you know, we, we've set her memorial up like this because J.J. was instrumental in having a coffee house of musicians and poets and writers here at this church for many years. And so what better way we thought than to help be of assistance to have people just be here to celebrate in a, in a casual coffee house type of way. <laughs> and in that, this won't be necessarily your normal type of, of memorial, if you will. We will, of course, have words of assurance and sharing, but we have a lot of music too, because that was a huge part of who J.J. was. And so with that, we're going to begin with a, with a song from a special guest, J.J. herself. So let's listen to her song. JJ could be a part of and be here, just like she will always continue to be here. And we figured, let's start the 
time together with her because she liked to be in charge. <laughs> she set the tone, and her tone is happiness. Amen. I'm going to invite us to join together in a moment of prayer. Friends, we're gathered in this place of love right now, made so by all of you who are gathered here. We all come from varied and numerous backgrounds of faith. But the thing we all have in common is divine love. The source from which JJ came and the source to which JJ returned. And so we call upon that divine love, that happiness, that joy, all the names that are holy. We ask blessings upon this gathering that even in tears there is joy, where there is sadness, there is still happiness. And so we ask blessings upon this time that we can celebrate the incredible life of JJ, our friend. In all the names that are holy, I ask and pray these things. Amen and amen. And so I am going to invite forward a group of very talented musicians, friends of hers, to come forward and share a couple songs. Uh, Lane Sandin, Joe Warner, John Park, David Eccles, Dennis Willis, and Michael Crane. JJ would join us singing harmony with um, on a Sunday. She'd just come in and say, you know, we just say, sing some harmony. She's a good harmonizer. Mm -hmm. So uh, we sang the song. Mm -hmm. Haze of grace 
will shine on through you. stories I've been told before my eyes unfold. Terry Bradley, who was on piano as well. I didn't acknowledge him. 
I'm inviting forward Darren McDonald, and uh, he asked to share the, um, he'll share a little bit about his time and his friendship with, with JJ and uh, share a song. So as I was making my way towards becoming a minister of MCC, I did about a year and a half. We were doing these open, all arts open mics between this church and the church um, at MCC in Los Angeles. And uh, JJ was the, the local coordinator here, and so we got to partner a lot on that. I was talking earlier about kind of that effortless chill that JJ brought. And as a fairly shy person, that could be really helpful. <laughs> I was talking about how I felt more at home when she was visiting my home over there <laughs> than I would have been without her. And so think about kind of that hope of one day being released from those pains of this life, rejoining those that we've lost, rejoining JJ. Say everything can be replaced. They say every distance is not near. seen the incredible pictures that are in the social hall. Yeah, I want to thank those who pulled those together and 
you know, the, the photos are one of the ways that we can really get a glimpse of who somebody was. You know, we all know her, most of us only know <coughs> JJ, knew JJ from one aspect of her life. Some of us knew her from church, some of, her, some of us knew her from her dojo, which she loved uh, beyond words. Some uh, knew her from The Hub and Disney and her workplaces. Uh, some knew her growing up, and some called her bestest friend, and only one called her wife, and that was Dee. And when we all come together at times like this to remember, we do it through photos, yes, and we also do it through what I like to uh, call creating a photo album of JJ. And we do that not just with photos, but with our memories. And so at this time, we're gonna take a few minutes for some of you and, and open it uh, to others uh, to share a thought or two that was uh, is on your heart that you would like uh, the rest of us to know about her because when we're done, I honestly know that we'll have a more complete picture of who JJ is and who JJ was in life <coughs> and who she continues to be as many of our angels. So with that, I'm first going to invite forward uh, Margie. and Norm to come and, uh, and share a few words that they've heard. Good afternoon. Um, this, of course, is Margie, in case you were trying to guess who was who. <laughs> um, Margie. Margie is uh, kind of a unicorn. She's, she's actually blood. She's JJ's cousin. some stories, hopefully. Um, I want to share a couple stories to kind of start out. Um, while I'm not blood, we were family. We're all in this room, we're all family. I just adopted you, so we're all family. Glad to see you all here. Um, I do want to say a couple stories I'm going to share. It might be a little PG, so I'm going to apologize to all of you, apologize to you, but there are <laughs> stories that people want to hear. Um, if I had a regret, it was that I didn't get to know JJ sooner in life. I met JJ about uh, 12 years ago. Margie was still living in Indianapolis, and I was a California boy out here. And I uh, flew out for a family reunion, <clears throat> and we were heading to Hocking Hills, Ohio. And midstream, we picked up JJ, and that was my first time to meet her. And uh, you know, we had some pleasant conversation in the car as we were driving. And I don't know, 20 minutes after we picked her up, we had to stop. You got out. I don't recall if you were getting something to drink or something else, but JJ and I were sitting in the car, and uh, JJ, uh, with her smile, turned to me and she said, just in case you're wondering, I'm a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> and I had uh, 10 or 12 really witty comebacks, and uh, I went with, I, I looked, looked at her in the eye and I said, uh, well, that's another thing we have in common, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so that started our relationship, really, but we had an instant connection, and, you know, she may have said that more so for her than for me. I don't know. She didn't know me. It's this guy from California. They're, they're cousins dating, but we, we definitely hit it off, and as you know, JJ um, is one of the most loving, caring people you could ever meet. Um, <clears throat> while she was in this this uh, last battle, she it was not uncommon for her when she knew I had an important speech or meeting um, or even some minor health issues that really paled in comparison to what she was fighting. And she would call or text me, say, how did it go or good luck today? And that just really blew me away. Um, I want to share with you a couple of conversations we had the last, uh, I don't know, nine months. When JJ was in the hospital the time before, um, we had come down to visit, and Margie and Dee went to get Dee something to eat because Dee was taking care of JJ in her loving way that she does. And so they left the room, and JJ said, come over here and sit by me on the bed. And I sat down next to her, and she said, I want to know what your intentions are with my cousin. Because <laughs> she loves her. So I love her like a sister. And we had a great conversation, just a real deep uh, conversation. And again, it was her showing her care. 
Um, the Thursday, uh, the final Thursday, uh, I had just gotten back in town from a business trip and we went up to the hospital. And we got there and, uh, you know, it was a rough night the night before, neither one of you had slept. And so they gave JJ some meds to help her rest. And in the middle of her sleep, they changed her from the CPAP to the, what's the other one called, the DPAP? IPAP. I thought it was D, one better or something. <laughs> um, so it's, it's a, you know, a bigger thing. And um, she was laying there and I was sitting in the chair at the end of the bed. And she started to stir and wake up and she reached up and kind of felt, see what was going on. And then she saw me and she sat up and she just put her arms up. And that was the best hug ever, ever. And um, <clears throat> I think you're going to talk some more about that that night. But, um, you know, they say sometimes it's kind of that final burst that people have. And she had a good couple of hours that the four of us uh, were able to, to witness that and be there. Um, oh, so, so that night um, she was up and the nurses were coming and working on that the BiPAP thing. And has this big long blue hose on it and JJ's sitting there holding it across her lap and she keeps looking at me and grinning. And I'm thinking, something's coming here. <laughs> <laughs> and she, uh, she finally looked at me and she said, Ha ha, mine's bigger than yours. <laughs> I couldn't dispute it. So uh, that's uh, one of many memories that will stick and it's just her sense of humor shown through e even in the toughest of times. Um, one of the last conversations we had that I, I want to share with you is that, uh, you know, in talking about that final battle, and I, I said to her, I said, you know, I know you, you're gonna fight like the warrior that you are, but when it's time to go, it's okay to go. And I said, I just want you to have comfort to know that <coughs> we're all gonna be together again. And uh, when we do, there's gonna be no pain, <coughs> no discrimination, no labels. And uh, you know, she'll, I told her, you'll just be JJ, and I'll just be Norm, it'll be good enough. And I hope you all can find peace in that because we're all, all going to have that, that time with her again. Um, you know, Dee, I want to say to you, your love and caring and your support is a love story for the ages. And <laughs> if I can share a story from that, that final Thursday night, um, there were times that the three of us, JJ was very talkative, and we couldn't make heads or tails out of what she was saying. And then all of a sudden, like I said, it, she, she just got really vibrant. She was very happy and playful. And, um, there was a moment that Dee was taking care of her and sitting on the bed, and uh, JJ said, I love you. And Dee said, I love you more. And JJ just shook her head like a, like a kid. No, mm -mm, not possible. I'll never forget that. And in closing, before I turn things over to Margie Dee, I just I want you to know that you are family. You always, always will be. We love you. So I'm not funny. <laughs> <laughs> Really wasn't ready to let her go. I'm sorry. So as Norm mentioned, you know, JJ and I were cousins growing up. She lived in California and I lived in Indiana, so I didn't get to see her very often. Maybe one. She was such an adorable little girl. I think there's a picture out there. You can imagine just how adorable, how cute she was. And she was always so shy and quiet. <coughs> the complete opposite of me. Um, but it was wonderful to see her every year and spend time with her. And then um, about 12 years ago, I moved to California. And JJ reached out to me. And of all things, I, I invited her to imagine this. It was a cabbie party, which is like Tupperware for women's clothes. <laughs> all these women are coming to my house to try on clothes. And you can imagine that JJ had no interest whatsoever. But she drove down on a weeknight from Burbank to South Orange County just because she wanted to re-engage a relationship with me because we hadn't seen each other and really spent any quality time together in years. And we never really spent 
quality time together. We were just young cousins growing up on the opposite side of the country. And then <clears throat> we stayed in touch a little bit here and there. And then a few years back, um, we really started spending time together. And she started taking the time to come down and spend time with me on weekends in South Orange County. And then I made her bring D. And then Norm started joining us. And the four of us just had a wonderful time together. We would listen to her 70s music, and dance, and sing, and laugh, and cheat. cheat. At card games. Yeah. She, she cheats, but only to help the you poor person lose. Yeah. <laughs> and JJ always caught her. Uh, she couldn't get by with it. Um, and <clears throat> JJ always used to say, after we bonded and really got to know each other, she always used to say how lucky she was to have a cousin. But I often have questioned my move to California and if it was the right thing to do because I lost all my family back in Indiana. But after meeting JJ, I knew there was a reason, a bigger reason to be here because she brought so much to my life, so much joy and so much happiness. And even everything she was going through, she always selflessly was concerned about me and my happiness, which is why she talked to Norm and asked him what his intentions were <laughs> with her cousin. She was always worried if I was happy in my job and always telling me to write things down and journal them and reach for them and write details about what you want to make out of your life. And I was so happy to see that JJ had finally gotten what she always wanted in her life. She was happily married to her soulmate. She loved her dojo. She loved her church. She loved her friends. She loved Hub. She loved everybody so much. And I wish so much that she could have had more time to experience that joy, but I'm so glad she had it before she went. And one of the other things I want to say is <clears throat> some of the, you know, you hug somebody, like I hug you and I hug you, but no one hugs like JJ. There's something about her hugs that make you feel like she's just wrapping you in love and you're melting inside of her and she's just got so much joy and warmth and sincerity and she truly cares about every person when she's talking to you she's fully engaged in every single one of you she talked about all of you all the time and how much it meant to you to her to have you as her family and she considered you all family and then i know toward the end jj kept telling us and telling herself as she was fighting you know what did she say we've got to keep moving forward so I'm going to keep trying to move forward because that's what JJ would want. It's taking me a little time and a lot of support. I want to thank God for you guys. And thank you all for coming and being here because, again, you were all her family, and she truly loved all of you. So thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Another part of her family, I'm going to invite uh, Carl. Carl, where are, you, where are you, Carl? There you are, Carl. Carl, to come forward. Uh, he's going to be reading something from another part of her family, but he himself <coughs> has a long history with her. And she, I remember her telling me, you know, we, we, uh, you know, how did she get into the business that she did? And she said it all started at First Christian Church, uh, where she did started to. She was able to be brought into the fold and learn talent on, on how to uh, do sound and lighting and all of that stuff and more. And this was one of her mentors and friends. So Carl. Thank you. Uh, I met JJ. Uh, she went to high school at a place called Immaculate Heart High School. And I was an adjunct instructor in technical theater. And she had already gotten into lighting and that sort of thing. So, and uh, she, she was actually quite good. I, I'm not sure how well the school fit her, but she fit the theater like a glove. Um, and we, we had, well, at the time I was working in Chatsworth, I got a phone call one day from a, a woman that sounded a little distraught. And the first thing she said was, I know you're gonna say no. <laughs> and what happened is JJ had given her uh, my name to, uh, Gilmer McCormick, who's the director, the artistic director of the Advent Theater in North Hollywood, 
which is part of the First Christian Church. Uh, and I, I calmed Gilmer down and I said, well, we'll have a meeting. Uh, I ended up designing like 30 shows with her, so I'm glad I didn't say no, of which probably 10 of them, uh, JJ, uh, did the lighting on and, and controlled. She was quite an operator and she was very spunky and uh, quite, uh, quite the woman. My only regret, regret is that I, I did not follow up and I haven't been here to support her in, in her end times and later in her life. And I obviously missed a gorgeous uh, woman and a gorgeous set of friends and I apologize for that. Uh, I have two uh, papers here. One is from Gilmer McCormick and the other is from her husband, Stephen, which I'll start with. Uh, Stephen was the musical director of the church at the time. So this is Stephen speaking. It is with great regret that we cannot be with you this, this day. Along with Gilmer, I want to extend to Dee and everyone present my deepest sympathy and also my deepest empathy. Nearly two years ago, we attended our daughter Eve's memorial gathering. Uh, Eve, by the way, was slightly younger than JJ. Uh, we will never forget the shock, the disbelief, the anguish, and the long-term grief that settled into our souls since the hour of her passing. So we know what you, Dee, and all of you here who cherish JJ are feeling. But look around you. Look at the love and support that surrounds you. Take comfort in each other and the promise of Christ that there's no final farewell, there is no death. Jennifer was a young, vibrant teenager when we first met her in a place that was the beginning of many new friendships when we first arrived in Los Angeles, the First Christian Church. We immediately took to her and of course, as all parents of young children do, we were always keeping our antennae up for potential babysitters. So Jennifer began to uh, uh, sit for James, Brian, and Eve. They adored her, and from that time forward, Jennifer became a part of our family, and would remain so until the hour that she departed. I call to mind many of us, uh, the years many of us spent with her at the Advent Theater. Shakespeare said, all the world is a stage, and all the men and women merely players. On the surface, this observation may seem to trivialize our purpose here, but he had something deeper in mind. We come into this world with pen and paper. We begin to write our stories and populate them with the characters. Some are in our plays, but for a moment, or a day, or years, or decades, and a few, or a lifetime. They are family, friends, lovers, teachers, confidants. But obstacles for us to overcome, oh, uh, some enter from the wings with challenges, bringing pain and suffering, creating obstacles for us to overcome. And it is the manner in which we overcome that is the beating heart of life. JJ faced every obstacle and with fierce courage and un unyielding will. And she asked, um, and all she asked was to be accepted and loved for who she was. She found that love and acceptance in all of us who supported her, encouraged and loved her. Every great writer knows, excuse me, I, I stand on my leg. Uh, every great writer knows when the play is finished and when that time comes, put down the paper as resolutely as it was taken up. JJ abides now in a spirit and those who have gone before us and will abide in spirit with us and who are left to uh, remember until the time when we all meet once again in that beautiful beautiful shore. Rest in joy and peace, dearest J. Dave. Thank you for the gift of your life, and may God bless each and every one of you. Stephen. Uh, Gilmer and Steve now live in Louisville, Kentucky, which was uh, Gilmer's childhood home. This is from Gilmer. Let me be the first to say how I am that I can't be, oh, excuse me. Let me first say how sad I am that I can't be with you all today. To be in your company, you who loved Jennifer as I did, and together witness the extraordinary life in this precious human being. But since I cannot send this letter with my sympathy, uh, <laughs> excuse me, because I cannot, I send this letter with all my sympathy and love. 
I've always called JJ Jennifer, and she has always, oh, somewhat reluctantly at first, allowed me to do so. You see, when I first met her, she was barely 11 years old. That little elf of a human being who, little elf of a human being who walked into my young adult life with a bounce and a swagger and a grin that covered half her face, which is an accurate description, and a young heart as big as the sky. I loved her immediately as I got, and got to calling her my little Jennifer. Over the years, I conceded to dropping my little part uh, when addressing her, especially in public, but there was no way I was ever going to start drop the Jennifer part, and she conceded. I loved, the, I loved this beautiful woman. I loved watching her grow over the years, trying to figure things out, trying to make sense of where she belonged in this world. Of course, there were many times of heavy turbulence in her life, as in all our lives. But, she, but to me, the way she uh, rose to those waves, uh, that does her the greatest honor, as I'm sure you, as her friends, witnessed to yourselves. How many times she was knocked down, only to get up and try again, try, fight on another day. She has always had that ability, even as a child. I would have expected no less. But as much as I speak of turbulence, there was an equal amount of joy in her life. Karate and animals, the church and music, the people in her job, and most importantly, her precious Dee, whom she loved with all her heart. Knowing Dee as I do now, again, I would have expected no less. It is hard to once again say goodbye to someone you hold so dear and someone so young. So I tell myself the story, and it comforts me, and maybe it will you too. It's a story about when we die, there's a huge banquet given to welcome us home. It is a magnificent affair, and all of, the, all of those of your tribe who've gone before greet you and with shouts of joy and song. I imagine that for my Jennifer, the moment she walked through that door. I know my daughter Eve, whom we lost two years ago to cancer, was there welcoming her, loving her, and easing her transition into this new and mysterious life. They are not alone, they are not afraid, and they are whole again. It's just as easy for me to believe as not to believe. Shalom, my dear friend. And now we invite, if there are those of you who would like to share a memory uh, of her with the group, I invite you to do so. You can either come forward, I will bring the mic to you. Is there anybody who would like to share? And by the way, whilst people are thinking about that, there are a few chairs back here that are open. Hi, I'm, I'm Dana. I, I don't know hardly any of you. You know me. I know you. <laughs> and I didn't really, unfortunately, know JJ as well as would have liked to, time, you know, life being what it, what it was, kind of, we had a few moments, but we didn't, I didn't really get to know her. Why I'm here is for Dee. The effect that the relationship had <coughs> enlarging Dee's heart is staggering. My friend, you know, that I've known for many years before she met JJ, bloomed like unbelievable. And I just want to say that the, the fact that your heart has been enlarged to this level, and and now makes it, makes that known by the fact that the, this terrible grief. It's a sign that she had that effect. And, you know, you're, you've grown immensely. And that's down to her and both of you, of course. Um, we'll be seeing each other.
know JJ through the church, and when I came back to this church, I came because my father was journeying in cancer, and he had lung cancer, and I hadn't been here in a long time, and I came back here um, because I was feeling very alone, so I came back to this church, and um, a week later, I came back to the church again the following Sunday because my dad had transitioned, and JJ was the one that held me. Um, so somebody had talked about her hugs, you know, and her hugs were so deep, and her hugs were so sincere. We didn't have to talk too much, you know. We, she would always listen, and be there for whoever needed her, and. Um, but it was her hugs that made all the difference in my life and brought me back here. So I just wanted to you know, say thank you, JJ, and God bless you, Dee. JJ and I met in 1999 by phone. We were both working for Fox Family, and she was my contact for promotional videos that I needed to get approved by creative execs. Um, so we spent five months just talking on fo the phone, you know, not never meeting each other, but we built up a pretty good rapport, and we were uh, very much of the same mind and very uh, relaxed with each other. So I'd often pick up the phone and here, what are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> this was a daily occurrence. <laughs> and it would get more and more outrageous every time. <laughs> you know, Marbo feather fan, like a vaudevillian stripper, that. Oh, uh, I like the time that she was wearing purple chaps, she said. <laughs> or the time that she was wearing scarlet stilettos and a Groucho Marx mustache. <laughs> so, she definitely had a great sense of humor. Very blessed by that. Um, but more than that, JJ and I had a very deep connection. Uh, we were family. She and Dee would often come over for family dinners, and JJ shared something very close to her heart with me that she wanted to be a mom, and I did too. And uh, perfect timing. <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. Uh, this is my darling daughter, Ella. And JJ and Dee were all in when we had kids. They spent so much time with Ella that it was surprising that they could spend more time with us after we had our second child. But they did. Uh, the connection between JJ and our son, Aaron, was magical. There was no way to describe it other than that they were just, <laughs> they were just kindred spirits, for sure. One more second. Um, and we had so many of these family dinners together with all of us that JJ brought to us this wonderful game called High Low. And it's just what it sounds like. How was your day? What was the high point of your day? What was the low point of your day? Let's all share how we're feeling and tell each other we love each other. We still play this game all the time and we love it. And I have to say, one of the big highlights of my life was knowing JJ and loving her. Ella would like to say something. She helped us play, learn to play Uno. <laughs> Hi, um, I don't know most of you. I have met a few of you because of JJ. Um, being with her, my name is Kim, and JJ fondly called me Kimba, 
Uh, and uh, the funniest thing is, I really don't think that she knew that my name was not Kimba. Um, I met JJ in 98 or 99, also at Fox Family Channel, and worked with her at ABC Family Channel. We became fast friends because we realized that we both had a love of music. I'm a sound engineer and have been a sound engineer for 23 years. And as soon as she found that out, she's like, ooh, you can start recording my music. I'm coming up. <laughs> so she would come up to my house, which I had a studio in the garage, and she'd bring her guitar. And we would proceed to put a tri-tip on the barbecue, break out the wine and beer, and do nothing but meat and alcohol, <laughs> and record. And it was some of the most wonderful moments I'd ever had sharing my friendship with her, learning about her, learning more about her, hearing her life through her songs, which if you've ever heard any of her songs, she goes all out and her songs can go on forever and she will tell the story that comes from her heart about her friends, her family, people she's loved. Um, Dee? Hi. <laughs> Um, and it was just magnificent to know that side of her and to share that with her and her love for animals because I had my farm up there and she would talk about her cat Samantha and, and everybody and it was, um, it was truly a blessing to have her in my life and we co recorded so many songs and I brought a, a CD here of the music that we actually did professionally record and there's probably about 25 songs on there and that's maybe just going up to 2003 or 2004 so I know she's got at least three or four more dozen on top of that. Um, but anybody that knew JJ just knew how much love and joy was in her. And she brought that to me um, when she first met Dee. I could see the sparkle in her eyes. And um, we lost touch for a few years and then got back in touch again. And um, just what an amazing person. And so much love for you. And you know it. And. Just, uh, I, I, I can't say enough about how much, what a blessing she was and, uh, and everything she shared. So she will be very, very missed, but in her music, in her song, she will live on forever. So thank you so much. My name is Megan. I'm one of the pastors here also with Pat. I've known JJ since 2006 when I first came to this church. A lot of people have been speaking about music. And it was her passion. When she sang, it was beautiful. It was touching. It came from her heart. There was joy in the song she sang and mirth, especially when she had an opportunity to sing with Roseanne. But music is also what brings people to this church. It's also one of the things that keeps people in this church. It kept me. Listening to her both sing and preach. And she had a passion for both. She had an enthusiasm and I'm gonna miss that so much. So about 15, 16 years ago, my wife Kathy was working at ABC and I would go to ABC and visit and take her lunch sometimes. And one day I was there and we had just gotten this eight week old Yorkie puppy named Seamus. And um, she, she had Seamus at the office, and she said, oh, I want to introduce you to somebody. This is JJ, and she's taking pictures of Seamus. So she, she took the first, the first official pictures of this dog that was about this big, and I still have those pictures. So about two or three years goes by, and I didn't think much else of it, and I was fostering kittens for the Burbank Animal Shelter. And I got a phone call. People would come to the house to look at the kittens, and so someone wanted to come and see his kitten that I had. I said, okay, come on. So I see the car pull up. I like to grab the door before the bell rings because the dogs all go insane. And so I open up the door and up the walkway is coming JJ. I hadn't seen her in like two or three years since she was taking pictures of Seamus. And I went, 
And she went, and I said, I know you. And she's, I don't think she recognized me at the time. I said, you used to work with Kathy at ABC. And so behind her is Dee. So we reconnected and they ended up adopting um, this little kitten that we had who is now Maggie. Um, and it just, it was such a wonderful reconnection because then she brought me here and I sang here for several years and we would do game nights and it was just, we reconnected all those years ago and it was just through the animals. It was just kind of cool. JJ really loved. It was a double entendre song. So And it, it requires audience. It requires I think that's why she liked it so much. You have to all help us. We can't do you it. You are the bagpipes of droning. Congratulations. <laughs> so the song is called Thing Me. So everybody's together. Oh, thing me. Thing me. Maybe a little faster? Thing me. Thing me. If the color of his eyes be blue, if the color of his hair be brown, if the color of his teeth be pearly white, then what shall the color of his pink be? <laughs> Don't ask me. JJ loved that song. Don't ask me why. <laughs> I, I was hoping. I, <laughs> that's your job. Because <laughs> if JJ, one of her biggest dreams was all of her friends just to come together back and forth. That's why you see these little pieces of paper on here. She just wanted all of her friends from so many different places to to get together and meet her, uh, meet each other, and and see how you knew each. Because people are so different and yet so the same. In uh, you know, in how we know JJ, we we loved her smile, we love her sense of humor. Uh, she's smart and witty and talented, and she cared deeply about everybody. And it's just, it's such a hole right now. And but to have so many people here that loved her and cared for her, and there were so many people that wanted to come but couldn't. It was just so hard to get a day that everyone could make it. And that's why we stretched out the day too, because I know some people have to come and go. We made it long because some people can come early and some people can come late. But it was just, it's so wonderful to see so many people reaching out. Ah, I see you. If you all want to know who was in charge of the Wiener Nationals, <laughs> back row. <laughs> you can see it on the questionnaire how many, how many different ways everybody knows. <coughs> know that she loved every one of you as, as deeply and truly as everybody else. She just, that was the way she was. And, and you know, she's still here making jokes and laughing. And people are, t I have people calling me, telling me they're, you know, they're seeing her in their dreams and they're, they're seeing her on their, you know, on the couch or their this or that. And I'm like, well, crap, send her to my house. I haven't seen her yet. <laughs> she's never left. That's probably true. I'll never forget the first, the time I was really upset that she came over. And when she was over, I, was, I wasn't upset with her, but something was really bothering me and I was all for clipped. And she reached out, grabbed the paper from my hand, crumpled the ball, threw it in the ground, and went, <laughs> <laughs> That was her. <laughs> all the money. And 
Here, she, 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 she mimes, that's her mime for yep. get rid of it. Never forget. Yeah. Anyway, are we good? Yeah. Or we've done our bit. Thanks for Thank you. Thank you so much. The, I, I would end it right there, except I do want to know if there's anybody from the Her Dojo who would like to share, because you were also an incredible part of her life. So if you would speak. Uh, us, everybody. Oh, so that's something we say at the dojos. Us, that's a, uh, a sign of respect that we give each other. And uh, I thought I had to say that. My name is Rob, and um, JJ uh, trained with us for 10 years. And she was the, the heart of our dojo. <clears throat> so I just, I just came up here to talk about it. Anybody else can come up here, because this, this is my feelings about JJ, and I know there's so many stories about JJ and our dojo that other people have, things that I didn't even know about. There's connections among people that trained with Doja, uh, JJ, because she started out, as we all do, as a white belt and got up to the level of third degree black belt. And it was her last promotion, which was on September 2nd, when she was um, <clears throat> on oxygen. And it's, I didn't, I'll end with that story, because I just wanted to talk about her <coughs> coming through uh, my experience with her. As I understand, she brought Dee to the dojo because Dee, yeah. Dee wanted to train again. And so JJ said, well, I'll uh, give you this gift to come and train with us. So, and she, you, she, you wanted her to come with you, right? Well, yeah, Jun Chiang gave us uh, two months for the price of one. And I'm like, oh, you gotta come with me. I'm not going on my own. <laughs> So they started that to, to train, and I was teaching class on Friday nights, and I remember uh, our Jun Chia, and he said to me, I don't know if JJ's going to stick with it. And she did for 10 years, and she lost, how many pounds did she lose? Uh, she lost like about 75 pounds. 75 pounds. We have this picture of her, which is like something you would see on the back of Reader's Digest or something like that where she's showing her old uh, ghee pants, and it's out to here, and she's, her waist is about this big. And uh, she just went through this amazing transformation and became, uh, as some of them called it, the syllabus, because she knew that everybody's the technique. She had flashcards about it. We all have to have these promotions where we have to know our technique. And, um, so we had a promotion in September where our grandmaster from New York, uh, Kaicho Tadashi Nakamura, came out, which was a very big deal to us, and, and he came out for the, for the day to do this promotion. And we had a lot of people coming from San Francisco, some other people from <coughs> Los Angeles, some people from Seattle came. And JJ came, and she was on a, in a wheelchair with her oxygen tank, and she took the promotion. And she did what she could, and it was the most, uh, <clears throat> to me, the, uh, the strongest thing I've ever seen in, in uh, our karate. I mean, we have some uh, really strong people in our, uh, our whole organization throughout the world, and that's one of the most powerful things that I ever saw, was her doing her kata. Uh, <clears throat> and she did it while in her wheelchair, and she fell down. And we helped her up, and she finished her kata. And after the promotion, uh, our kaicho told us that that was the most uh, inspirational promotion that he'd ever seen. Uh, or, I mean, I'm not putting, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I got the impression that it was a very important promotion for him. And um, I wanted to tell that story. And there's many other light stories about her time with us, and. and uh, you know, I was thinking about this is her space for you, and we have our dojo, and we signed a you know five year lease, so we'll be there for five more years. But we can go to that dojo, and we uh, Jin Chan John announced that we're going to bow. When we bow in the class, we bow to our seniors, and it's all that it's it's about respect. It's not about any who's who's the best or whatever. 
but we bought it uh, Senpai JJ uh, at the beginning of every class. We have a picture up there, and we can feel her presence in the dojo. We can just remember where she's been. So that's what I wanted to say. Us. Friends, there's uh, I, 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 my, my heart is filled, as I am certain all of yours are, on hearing the different parts of JJ's path in her life, from the 11-year-old elf to the, <laughs> to, the, to the warrior earning her belt. I got to tell you, the picture of uh, Dee holding her oxygen tank as she's um, doing uh, her kata was hands down one of the most incredible um, testimonies to who she was and is. So with that, friends, we have a, uh, we will be having a lot more time to share stories um, uh, after uh, this time is done. Uh, that I do want to um, let folks know that there are uh, cards over there that you're welcome to take uh, afterwards and. I uh, write a memory on it, and then there's a basket that you can put them in that uh, will be given uh, to Dee afterwards. And so with that, I'm just going to invite us just to take a few moments while Dr. Michael Crane um, uh, plays for us, and then we will be wrapping up shortly. One of the nice things about playing for the services here is that um, you know, I get to plug in classical pieces here and there. And um, one of the, not long after I, uh, after Reverend Pat came and, um, and I met JJ around the same time, uh, we were doing a service and I forgot what point of the service it was, but they needed some, they just, we just needed some filler music. And so I played this, one of my favorite pieces by Foray. And it wasn't like a featured piece or, you know, or anything like that. Um, but uh, it was kind of just a bridge between one part of the service to the next. But I remember after I stopped, JJ was standing right here, and, and she just turned and looked at me, and she just mouthed the words, it was beautiful, and then turned back to what she was doing. And I never, never forgot that. So, that's, so I thought I'd like to share that little piece uh, today.
many of you know, JJ was a deacon here. She was a member and deacon here at this church for 20 plus years. Deacon is somebody who is there whenever anything is needed. They are the one who truly embodies ministry, in my opinion. One who is of service at all times in as many ways as they can be there. And so I've asked Deacon Al and Deacon Tom if they would uh, share uh, something for her in honor of that part of her life. Good afternoon. Um, I've been, I was a member of this church starting back in 98. And I saw JJ here and followed my calling also to uh, minister to all of you, friends and family. Um, one of the things that JJ um, participated in was in pastoral care. She was alongside my dear wife, Lissa, um, who used to be the music director here as well during a time when um, Lissa was taking a medication to prevent her seizures, but she had every reaction possible to that medication, and JJ was there alongside of her through it and uh, convinced her to stop the medication because otherwise it would have done major damage bodily. Um, JJ was a supporter of the choir and um, let Lissa babysit Charlie <laughs> during the choir sessions. Um, she was a creator of original musical pieces, as you already know. Um, she loved the coffee house. She was a coordinator of that and supported the music at MCC. Um, 13 years ago, when I married my beloved Lissa, Lissa asked her to be the best person at our wedding and to stand for Lissa in place of, you know, maid of honor. But we called her best person. It was great because as uh, she said, I'll do it as long as I don't have to wear a dress. And that was the <laughs> easiest um, shopping event for all of us because we all went together to the tux store and outfitted us all in tuxes and JJ as well. And she was quite handsome. She was quite handsome, um, maid of honor. Um, I have a reading that I'd like to share with you all, um, which I feel is fitting of this occasion. It's called, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad that you are here. I know that there are other ways you would have pref much preferred to spend this day and I am pleased that you have set aside the time to be here now. It's not that I require an audience of saddened faces to bemoan that I have left and can communicate with you no more. The fact that you showed up is quite enough to demonstrate you care. Old friends and family that reunite, if but for this brief time in this most tranquil, tranquil place of rest, reflecting on old memories of time that long have passed. The words we uttered then, the things we did, some humorous, some filled with poignancy, and questions that remain unanswered yet. Those precious moments that we shared of love and caring, and of course, the many mundane worries and the trials, such things that seem so vital in their time. I'm Deacon Tom, and uh, I, uh, when I first came to this church in 1993, JJ was already a deacon, and uh, uh, among others, the, one, of the, uh, one of the reasons why I immediately found that this church is my spiritual home, and she's such an inspiration, among others, and gave to me one of the one of the things is to pass on what we are given through here 
And I knew that I, I was never very involved. I was never an altar boy or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But when I got to this church, I said, yes, this is where I'm being called. And I need to pass on as well what the gifts are given. JJ was an inspiration to that. We happen to have a lot in common. I too am a, a singer songwriter, and I've, uh, I admire her stuff. And it's funny, she, she liked what I did. And yet we knew so little of what, you know, uh, as, as we found out, she's had so many you know, things. But the few uh, pieces that she did share with us just got to me, and she supported me in, in, in mine. We, we, and, and in addition to that, you know, music has been so important, and not just our original stuff, but the hymns and stuff, and the, the harmonies. And um, I was also, uh, uh, you know, uh, became part of the choir, and uh, it was just uh, amazing. But uh, you know, uh, and then in uh, 1995, uh, I decided I need to do a little more, so I also became a deacon, and uh, she was there. She also, she was one of the one that, uh, you know, wearing the cincture, and she was the one that taught me the, the trick to how to tie this around. And uh, so I'll never forget that. Uh, and one of the other little uh, funny coincidences about things is that there's another connection that I have directly with, with Dee. And uh, also, oh, by the way, you know, that once they got together, the two of them really blossomed, and, and it was just such a, a wonderful miracle to, uh, to witness. And, um, you know, um, I was, uh, in addition to Deacon, um, in, uh, since 1997, I was uh, the, the church uh, administrator, an office administrator, for uh, almost 20 years before I retired. And, uh, you know, who knew that <laughs> Dee would be the one to sort of take over that position, and uh, uh, you know, it's, it's just uh, such a blessing. And uh, you know, Dan, I'm, I'm with you, and uh, you know, I, I know we've been working together, and I will continue to support you. I, I'm, you know, I may be retired as the administrator, <laughs> but I'm not retired as the deacon. This is the, 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 again, I need to, through you know, thick and thin, and I've been through some illnesses and, and whatever, but. I, God has me here for a purpose. I'm still, uh, I made it through, and as long as I am here, I want to be part of this and pass it on to all of you with, with her love. So thank you. In tribute and commemoration of JJ, I like this candle to represent that she is in spirit where she needs to be and truly with you all. Thank you. The candle that he mm -hmm. lit or like them uh, in the social hall and you're invited mm -hmm. to uh, take one home with you uh, and, and, and light it on your altar or your special place at home. Uh, so please feel free to do that. Steve? Yeah? Steve Hernandez, a long time friend, is uh, going to share. How's everyone doing? My name's Steve, and I met JJ because I used to play drums at this church for a while. And um, if anyone knows me, I'm not really a morning person. So uh, <laughs> I would have to be there here at 9 a.m. on Sunday, and like for a, a, 20, a guy in his mid 20s, that's not an easy task. Um, <laughs> uh, 
so every Sunday I'd be here and I feel like I was just the grumpiest person in the world. <laughs> but JJ always greeted me with a smile and she chipped away at me until like, I just said, okay, I'll go out to lunch. Like, yeah, okay, let's hang out sometime. And, and we became like really good friends and over the years, I just realized that she was probably one of the sweetest, most kind souls I've ever met in my life. And um, it was really hard to hear that she, uh, what she was going through the past couple years. So, um, yeah, and I, I truly, I really love JJ so much. And I, to me, she was one of my <coughs> biggest fans because she would always go to my shows and performances in the past couple of years even though she was sick she still came out um, so this song is um, a song by Buddy Holly and um, Buddy wrote it for his wife um, four months before he passed away and um, I played the song for JJ I brought my guitar in to the hospital the last uh, couple days she was here and um, I sang this song to her and um, I remember her telling me afterwards like, wow, there was a guy who was really in love and I just, I know that really touched me. So I wanted to dedicate this song to Dee and JJ and the love that they have for each other because um, I think it's a very beautiful thing. So Yeah Just you know why Why you and I By and by, no true love ways. Sometimes we'll sigh, and sometimes we'll cry. done with our time here of memories we're going to close in a moment with a special song that we all get to sing to it's uh, I'll have Darren when he comes forward in a moment uh, tell you why but I just want to uh, leave with you with this some of my own thoughts that I have not shared yet um, I, I echo just about everything 
folks uh, shared today. Um, you know, there are some things when you think about some people, you, our first thoughts. And with JJ, her smile is one of them. Her determination and love, her desire to help in any way possible, and to make stuff happen the right way. I'm not going to say her way, but the right way. I, if there's any regret that I have, it is that she has gone so soon after I was able to join this community. I've known JJ and Dee for a long time. Um, even introduced them. <laughs> Got to confirm their wedding. And now, overseer passing. Celebration. But one of the things that I, I want to thank her for personally, when I found out that there was a high possibility that I could be here as interim and hopefully settle pastor is that she was one of my champions, for which I was, am eternally grateful. And I remember going out with her and Dee after the answer had been yes, and we were so excited. We went to Denny's and we just talked and talked and talked and talked and talked and talked and talked about all the cool things that we were going to do together. And she was going to come back and help with starting to do a expanding our um, our pastoral care team, our congregational care team, and she had a training. I got a training. Don't worry, Reverend Pat. I got it. I got it. Not even Reverend Pat. But it was just Pat. I got a training and everything, and I can't. And we just. It was one of the best breakfasts. I've had in a really long time, and I don't always remember that. But her time was not to be extended, and so for the short time that we were here together, I was blessed with her, and will continue to be blessed by her. On the day that uh, she passed, when I, uh, the next day when I returned, um, I returned that night, but the next day when I saw my daughter, I have a 10-year-old daughter, who's known them for some time. And uh, she had this question mark look. And I said, yes, JJ's passed. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and what I told her is something that I hope that we all take within us, no matter how much or how deep pain might be because of the loss of our friend, our family member. It reminds us, as with any passing, how precious our life is here today. And to, if there's any lesson, it's to take all the love and the dedication and the loyalty and the joy and her elfishness, her impishness, her musical talent, her desire to help people at all times in any way she could, her creativity, to take that and manifest it so that she might continue to live. And may that be what fills our hearts today as we after our closing song in just a moment, may that be the hope, may that be the joy that we can receive at this time that we share these two conflicting emotions. It's okay to cry, it's okay to laugh, but let us always remember and live today to the fullest. It is all we are promised. So when we leave from here, remember to make the call to the one you love who you haven't talked to in a while, to give a JJ hug to your loved one, may she continue to live on in our hearts. I thank you for being here and remembering her. And now Darren and his backup will come forward for our closing song. <coughs> frequently at uh, MCC in the Valley. Um, and in a way, it seems so perfect for her. It's a song about loving and, and living more fully. And so I'm offering that as a way of us singing out ourselves out of here and, and joining in that spirit of day by day, 
celebrating life.
are so lovely Standing in my doorway Your eyes are full of love Your heart seems to wrap around me And everything I have And everything I hope to have Is so much more with you With you You are so graceful Striding down the avenue Your hands hold purpose Your thoughts are kind And everything I have And everything I hope to have Is so much more with you, with you, because you believe in me, believe in me, believe in me, you are so gentle, when you touch my face, you speak of longing When your lips brush my cheek And everything I have And everything I hope to have So much more with you With you Because you believe in me So very honest When you show me your love and Everything I have And everything I hope to have Is so much more with you With you Because you believe in me
much to take inside at night. In the field, my heart is withering, my tears will soon dry inside. before and I'm still alive inside I feel I'm alright I'm I'm searching.
smile I can feel that sunlight I am lost without you here I cannot face these And then become one again. Find your way home, wayward daughter. Find that light somewhere. Free my wings with your secrets. Find. Light somewhere, find that light somewhere. Grant us peace in the light that we have none. Grant us. Please make me see. I want to believe. I need to be free. Excuse me if I just need a little reminder. Wish on purpose. Just 
It takes time for you to set things right. You'll find a way. Let me hold you, darling. It's all right. I'm here to stay. You know that hope. I just want to help you until the day when you open your eyes and smile again. Close when winter came and we were born each 
Just don't understand how they can see what's real. Guess I'll try again. Painful as I go, I simply must accept what they cannot believe. Guess I understand. Time I blink, everything's alright. It's not. Time will tell its tale, and I know that way. I don't know what I caused. Once again, I'm lost. I don't understand. I just want you to love me. 
Just fairy tales. That's just life. That's just. told you what can you do when it's no longer real yet through it all I still hope to find it how can I not want to know just how it feels to find my precious really out there that's just life
I could find a way to let you know what's in my heart. It's all too big, and I don't know how. I would give you my eyes to show you how I see you. I would give you my ears to let you know I listen. I will give you my feet to let you know you walk with me always. I will give you my breath to prove to you that I know you. Sometimes I get scared. I know that sounds funny, but I'm just so made. believed I would meet someone like you. I'm so overwhelmed and I don't know how to say. I would give you my hands to show you you are real to me. I would give you my smile to show you how much it comes from you. I would give you my heart to show you the vastness of my love. I would give you my arms to let you know I'd hold you forever. You see, you never leave my thoughts, never leave my heart. And I hope
wish I could find a way to let you know what's in my heart. Something big, a little love to let you know. to see I see beyond them their judgments don't apply to me they choose to close their eyes to me or to anything uncomfortable and for a while I saw nothing
Just in 